Hello everybody, and welcome back to Star Wars. So, I figured I'd give you guys my final thoughts on Shadows of Revan, now that I've finished it. You know, I've hit 60, I've, I've finished it, and I've actually purposefully taken quite a few days uh, in between the ending of it and now to record this, because I, I wanted that, uh, that kind of like end feeling you get when you complete a game and you're very satisfied that you finally have you know completed something uh, because let's face it most of us don't complete games on a frequent basis we get about halfway through and then we quit so that you know like oh i completed this cool like i'm satisfied right so i wanted that to wear off so that way i could really get to how i like actually feel about the uh the expansion so i'm in my stronghold first of all right because uh why not uh, this is actually my first experience with the strongholds i took some time and i built you know what i wanted to on the uh the drome and castle and i really do like the the rainfall against the windows it's a cool effect so We'll talk a little bit about what I think of the Strongholds, because this is also my first experience with that. I'll show you around a bit as we talk about Shadows of Revan, and, uh, and yeah, and I'll, I'll give you guys some, some parting thoughts on it, and I should you pick up the expansion or not. Alright, so let's start with uh, the fact that... Who just threw that at me? Seriously. Was it him? It had to have been him. Let's start with the fact that I personally... Uh, I, I was okay. Let, I was a little too critical of stupid things on the last video, right? It was just the little things that were, you know, kidding me. Like there was a lot of daily quests. There was a lot of, you know, just little tiny things on each planet that was bothering me. But as an overall whole, I really like the expansion. Since the last time that I played, I did. Uh, two different different flashpoints because of the story requires you to do it and I did the you fight Revan uh, operation that's not really a spoiler you, you pretty much everybody knew at one point you're probably going to fight Revan well at the end uh, when you hit 60 or when you're close to hitting 60 there's a thing where you can go in and it's actually an operation it's a raid to fight Revan except you can do it solo there's an option to do it solo uh, which I will also talk about and give you my thoughts on how that all feels but generally I think uh, yeah I think the story was okay I, I liked that they brought Revan to a place where it didn't just feel like they were rehashing an old story, at least in my opinion. Like, they made it a little bit more fresh, regardless of the fact that, you know, Revan's an old character. But at the same time, I also felt like they copped out a bit with it. It just it felt like they brought Revan back to bring people back to the game, right? It feels like one of those kind of... Uh, loops that they threw in there to, to try to grab people, which I totally understand, and I, I understand that that's um, a method of getting people to come back to the game, and you know, I'm, I'm fine with it, actually. The problem I have is that because they just kind of threw Revan in there, uh, the, the expansion isn't actually about Revan. Now, this is when it gets a little spoilery, so if you don't want to listen to this part, skip ahead like a minute. But this, the expansion is actually, again, about the Emperor. And I had predicted this a while ago, uh, probably a year and a half. It was, it was right towards the beginning of, uh, gosh, what's here, the Inquisitor series that I did. Because we had finished the, the Jedi Knight series uh, recently before that, and I was really into the Jedi Knight story. Because in the st Jedi Knight story, you... you take out the emperor by the way this is my garage i needed a place to throw down all my mounts because i have a lot of them and i still don't have enough spots to throw down my mounts so i wanted to um yeah i i wanted to mention the emperor thing going into this because i had a feeling that's where they were going with it but at the same time you know i didn't i didn't want to prematurely call the story because i feel like that's yeah, it just it makes me feel really depressed when at the beginning, like when I'm starting a story thing, I'm able to just be like, oh, this is about that. And unfortunately, I, I pretty much knew that this was all about the Emperor anyways, especially back when uh, when the, the first two Flashpoints came out. And this is obviously before Shadow Revan came out. 
but they were like preemptively doing the Shadow of Revan stuff. I, I remember saying like this is probably about the Emperor, you know, coming back in some way or another, and it was. So Revan was kind of kind of a pawn to the Emperor. Um, he's trying to uh, the Emperor was trying to get himself resummoned and everything, and while it worked kind of, it didn't work completely. I do like these trophies; they're really cool. I like that. Um, yeah, so I, I I feel like it was kind of a cop out using Revan to bring back the Emperor because you could have easily have done that myriad of different ways, uh, and you could have used Revan in a lot cooler of a, a story. Honestly, that's that's what I think. So story wise, prob like if I were to you know give it a this would be the only thing that I rate out of ten on this expansion. But if I was to give the story one out of you know one through ten, it would probably be about a seven. You know. Yeah, it was okay. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It was good. It kept me interested, and I really enjoyed it. And I was uh, overall just enjoying the the gameplay. Like I enjoyed coming back, and I enjoyed playing. So I was having fun while I was playing, and that's that's really all you can hope for. But since since beating it, since it's hitting sixty and getting you know the the Revan thing done and getting some gear, like all I did was go to the the basic comms vendor and just get 186 and i was using 180 before so it's not like i was a huge upgrade but i guess it was big enough and i did some things with my um crew skills I haven't got my underworld trading up but you know i'm doing a little bit of stuff here and there i just i i haven't felt the need to log back into the game i wanted to do a republic playthrough of the story and i still plan on doing that before my subscription time uh goes out but I just haven't felt the need to do it. Like, I picked up a few games on the Steam sale, and I've just been playing those, you know, between, like, Battle Block Theater with with Six. I've uh, been having a lot of fun with that. You know, we play that for, like, an hour uh, every night, and then, you know, a little bit of Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm I get in, and then I just play, you know, random other games, like Prison Architect. And for the most part, I, I'm getting a lot of enjoyment out of those games, and I just... It, this game isn't drawing me back to it as much as I thought it would. I like when I first started doing the story stuff, I was like, okay, I could probably play this for like a good solid month of being attached to star Wars yet again. And, and that would be, uh, you know, that would be enough to, to satiate my, my curiosity as far as, you know, what has changed and all that, but it hasn't even lasted that long. It's lasted a week and a half. Uh, and now I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm done, but I will do, a Republic playthrough, and I will stream it like I did the um, the Empire one. But uh, yeah, I don't think I uh, like I. I just wish that it was a little bit better, and this isn't a, you know, this isn't a Star Wars thing. This isn't a Star Wars thing that's that's bad about it. This is just me changing as a person, right? So let me explain something. Firstly, if you really like the expansion, awesome. You you like and play whatever game you want to play because that's. It's your free time, you do it, right? Uh, for me, I used to really be into MMOs because I would do the raiding scene, and I'm a very, very, and I've said this before, I'm a very competitive person, and the way I, I get my competitive nature filled is when I was raiding because I was doing it competitively. I really like these trophies. Once again, I like that these little things are here. It just kind of shows you your little achievements, your little raid achievements. It's cool. Speaking of raiding, you know, it's, it's relevant. But... I, you know, since leaving the raiding scene uh, and just stopping to play MMOs in general, like I haven't played a, an MMO since the uh, beginning of October uh, until installing this again, or I guess installing Secret World, but that doesn't really count because that only lasted uh, a little bit before I installed Star Wars again. But uh, for the most part, like I'm, I'm changing as a person. I don't feel like the raiding scene is what I want to get into again because it's a lot of work f to fulfill my competitive nature when I could take, you know, 20 minutes, log into either Hearthstone or Heroes of the Storm, for instance, and, and get my competitive nature there. As it turns out, I'm pretty good at Heroes of the Storm and I'm, I could be a fairly high rank if I wanted to within that game when they had the laddering system. So, it's like I, I have other ways to fulfill that that competitive desire in me, and I don't feel like I need to play MMOs anymore. And MMOs take a lot of time, and I'm putting a lot of time into the channel. So that time that I had to put into MMOs before isn't necessarily there, and since I'm not doing Star Wars videos, like that was a main proponent for me 
playing so much Star Wars is that I was doing videos on it. So I was I was creating an income off of it. So the time I was putting in, I was getting money out of it. So it's not like I was wasting my time per se. So those are just some thoughts on that. Like, I, I feel like I'm changing as a person. Therefore, I don't feel like I should be playing as much MMOs. Uh, I used to play anywhere between two and three. Just, like, switch them out, you know, per month. Like, what I was wanting to play and just have one that I was perpetually playing. Uh, now, I don't feel like that is going to be the case. I feel like uh, maybe I'll have one that I dabble in every now and then. But... I, uh, you know, that, like I said, this isn't a Star Wars thing. The reason I don't feel the need to play Star Wars right now is because I don't feel the need to play MMOs. And that's the difference. So I feel like overall, he threw it at me again. Overall, I feel like if you were interested in Star Wars before and you were, you were looking at Shadows of Revan and you haven't picked it up yet, I think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it because it's a good expansion. Uh, it adds quite a few bits of content. I haven't done the raid yet. He's just going to keep throwing these at me. And I want to do the raids. So that's like the last thing that I'll do before I, you know, kill my sub time again. And then, you know, there's a few bits of little content like the flashpoints and stuff that are worth doing, I feel. And there's the good story stuff. And obviously you can play it on Republic and Empire and kind of see the differences there. So there's plenty of content. And, and strangely enough, there's more content for the people who have a lot of characters. So such as uh, me, like I've got my family tree here. I've I've got a lot of characters. How many characters do I have within range of doing it? And by within range, I mean within five levels. So like uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine other characters that if I really wanted to, I could do the Revan story on. So... Uh, the people who have like this kind of setup where it's you have a lot of extra characters that you could play through this content on you're going to get more out of your twenty dollars for the expansion i feel i feel like um people who have only one level 55 and they log in to do the shadows of revan stuff and they don't really plan on doing any other characters they're not going to get twenty dollars worth out of the story unfortunately it's only about six hours but that's very subjective i mean that that is based on what you feel like uh, you're willing to pay for amount of entertainment. For me, like I said, I just bought um, a few games off of the Steam sale, one of which being Prison Architect, which was like $5, and I've gotten like 10 hours out of it already. Like, that's that's already a better hour per enjoyment per dollar spent for me, and honestly, that's a, that's a big deal. I, I have very little time to put into my own gaming as opposed to the gaming that I do for the channel so when I'm able to get a lot of time out of a game and not pay a lot out of it as well it's a it's a big deal for me so that your your mileage may vary on what you feel like is is worth it as far as all this is concerned you guys have pretty much seen my stronghold and I I did a little thing like that and I'll I'll finish off the video with showing you how the stronghold stuff works a little disappointed in it um, but that's just because I'm super spoiled as far as housing is concerned so very, very last thing with Shadows of Revan, just, you know, little things that I, I feel um, that I should mention is I feel like they haven't added a lot of variety to the cartel market. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because they keep it putting on like these old packs for the Christmas stuff. Um, it just it feels like I haven't seen a lot of new stuff on here. I've seen the Stronghold stuff and uh, like three or four new hyper crates. Um, but other than that, like, I haven't really, I, I don't feel like they've added a whole lot, but that's, that's probably super wrong. I'm pretty sure they have added a lot, but I just don't see it on there. So I was expecting to spend a lot more cartel coins on things that I thought I would be able to, uh, you know, use on my character. And instead I just ended up going to the, the GTN and buying gear that I thought would look kind of cool at the moment, uh, until I get new raid gear. So let's talk about the uh, strongholds a bit. So this is how it works. So you have like an edit thing. First of all, you have to buy your stronghold and there's a ton of other little things to it. But each of these is uh, an anchor point that you can place stuff down. So like the big purple wall stuff has uh, certain anchors that you could throw down on it. So like, you know, I could throw down this carbonite dude, right? Which is kind of cool. And then I could just close out of that. And then he's there. And these green ones have their own little stuff. So I could put pets and whatnot here. I saw one that was, there we go. You could put cantina stools. Uh, the purple ones have their own stuff that you could throw down, like a engineer's bench. 
And the other thing with this, I didn't learn it until later, is you could change the layout of these squares. So, like, you could... Oh, crap. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, it'll it'll go back. But you could change, like, how the squares are laid out, uh, which means you could put different stuff in different corners. And then there's these, like, glowy bits where you could put rugs down. And then there's stuff on the walls and stuff on the ceiling. So, for example, like, in the ceiling in here? No. It's upstairs. We'll go upstairs. Uh, you could put, like, lights and stuff on the ceiling. And you could put your trophies. Like, that one's the trophy for Nightmare Karaka back in the day. I, I wish that it had, like, a date on it. Like, when you accomplish that. I think that would be really cool. But that's uh, not the case. So let's go in here. Yeah, you could put... I put massive lights on the top. Which illuminates the room. And it's kind of cool. But overall, I'm a little spoiled on this kind of stuff. I feel like this is not what... I want out of a housing system. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It's really good. It's well implemented. But for the most part, I, I want to be able to place things individually and have a rotating, like a like an X, Y, and Z axis that I can rotate stuff on. And in, to some degree, you can. Like if I, if I click on this, uh, you can rotate stuff like this, right? And you can offset it and move it, which obviously is... Whatever, we'll just leave that like that. Which obviously is how I got these guys facing the directions that I wanted to face and not just facing one direction. Uh, like Mako was there where they're just facing off to the left. So like obviously I used that to position stuff. Like these were facing the other direction. I wanted the turrets facing that way. But for the most part, I don't feel like it's enough. Like what about all this empty area? Like why can't I utilize this? Why can't I take parts and piece parts together that maybe they didn't think of, like maybe make a stack of these kind of chests, like up, up my wall or something in order to make a weird stair system and then make platforms. Um, the Yeah, that just comes from being spoiled by other games as far as housing. And this all is due to the the restrictions of their, their engine, I feel, the reason they set it up this way as opposed to the other. So I totally understand why it's like this. I just, I wish there was more um, just so I could do a little bit more creative things in the, the house itself. Like in Wildstar, you're able to place individual pieces down, scale them, uh, like scale them ridiculous amounts. Like people were making houses out of like weird props that you just wouldn't expect and making it look really cool who are just like being really creative with this stuff and even in landmark which is more of a crafting building game so i don't expect anything to live up to the creativity in that but being able to place things down specifically like uh emitters for particles like smoke emitters and fog and stuff to give your place more atmosphere like, I wish there was stuff like that that you can throw down, but there isn't, and uh, I don't think I can change music in here or anything. I haven't found anything like that, uh, but that would have been cool as well. But they can always expand on it, and I'm sure they will, and if you're at all interested by the housing system, it's pretty much in the game uh, right off the bat, so I would suggest dinking with it uh, when you get enough credits to purchase a place. It's fairly cheap to get a base place, but to expand it, it costs quite a bit of credits. But that's kind of my ending thoughts on the expansion. I will have a few more videos. I do want to do a video after I complete the Republic one. Because I feel like once I do, I'll know whether or not the story crosses over too much. Because if there's too much crossover and it's kind of the same story on both sides, I feel like that's a cop-out. But if, it, if it's varied enough, then that's really nice. Uh, and it gives you a reason to do it on the other side. And then the, the last thing is doing the raids. I want to check out the raids and just see what the mechanics are. Um, again, really spoiled by other raids this year. Uh, easily the best raiding that I've ever played. I uh, played earlier this year. Uh, and this fall so it's gonna be hard to live up to that but i will give it its fair assessment and you know at the end of the day i would suggest picking up shadows of revan if you're at all still interested in star wars because it's totally worth it but with all that being said i shall see you guys next time